good evening, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Most gracious master, we come to you right now, and we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. If we had 10,000 tongues, it just would not be enough to say thank you. Please forgive us and have mercy, Father, for we need you. We need you, Father. Every second, man and every hour, we need you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for your word, your power, your understanding, your grace, your mercy, everything that there is about you, Father. We thank you. Thank Please keep saying, let your spirit fill us on today. As we go through your word, as we chew on the cud for the evening, Father, please continue to help us digest what you will tell us on tonight, Father. We thank you again in Jesus' precious name. Remember those who are still without power, Father. Please continue to protect them, love them, keep them, Father, as we are continuing to go through this ordeal, Father. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go over today Genesis 38, 39, and 40. Genesis 38, 39, and 40. Quick run through chapter 38. Uh, it was like the author, M Moses, had a uh, kind of followed the rabbit, the rabbit trail on this one, but it was for a reason. We take a small break talking about Joseph and his ordeal. In chapter 37, remember they sold Joseph into slavery. Now, in chapter 38, we get a glimpse or a story of Judah. And as you know, Jesus came from the line or the lineage of Judah. It says, and it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite whose name was Hira. They, so he left his brothers left his family and he made friends with an Adulamite. His name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua and he took her and went in unto her. He married her. And so they had sons. One was named Ur. One was named Onan. I remember when I first started this study here and it's very easy to break off from the point. Uh, uh, it's a whole research on Onan and Ur, which is some, you know, some good information. But it, it be very careful when you're do, or doing those separate studies that you don't miss the point of this chapter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the point. So they had Ur and Onan. And then she conceived again and had another son named Shelah. Now, verse 6, And Judah took a wife for her, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar, not Braxton. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Yes, you heard that right. The Lord slew him. The Lord killed him. And Judah said unto Onan, go in, go in unto your brother's wife and marry her and raise seed to your brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. 
Now, for God to do such a thing, ladies and gentlemen, these young men had some wicked, wicked hearts. But God done away with those too. Then Judah told Tamar, he says, okay, you're going to remain a widow at your father's house and wait until Shayla gets older. And then when it's time, I'll come and get you. And then you can marry him. So that was the agreement. In the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up unto his sheep shears to Timnath. He and his brother, I'm sorry, he, he and his friend Hira, the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, your father is coming. So he went to go uh, visit his friend Hira. And it was told unto Tamar, that, Hey, may your father-in-law come. And so what she did was she took off her widow's garments, and then she made herself look like a prostitute. That's what she did. She made herself look like a prostitute. Now, now this is uh, 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 what was trippy. She knew or she saw that Shayla was grown here in verse 14, and she was like, it is not his intention for me to marry that boy. So, you know, and so she devised her own plan. When Judah saw her, he didn't know it was Tamar. He thought it was another prostitute on the street. Which begs a question, bruh, what you doing? But I digress. And he turned unto her, by the way, and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto you. Y'all know what he said, don't play. And she said, What wilt thou give me? You know, what you gonna give me for this service? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, will thou give me a pledge till you send it? You gonna give me something now so that I won't be, you know, you know, while I'm waiting on that to come? He was like, all right, I'm gonna give you my signet ring and, and my bracelets and my staff. So he gave it to her. He went in unto her and then she got pregnant. So she arose and she went her own way. She she uh, uh, put her garment back on like she was a widow, and she, and she is. So Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he didn't find her. Then he asked the man at that place, saying, where is the harlot that was openly by the wayside? And they said, what you talking about, bruh? There was no harlot over here. He returned. And he returned to Judah and said, I, I, I can't find her. And Judah said, all right, let her take my stuff. That's fine. At least I tried to find her and come and make my payment. We came to pass about three months later, we saw that Tamar was starting to show. And so check this out. Tamar was starting to show. And somebody said, hey, your daughter-in-law that played the harlot out here, uh, Judah, she is with child by whoredom. Now look at what Judah said. Bring her here and let's burn her. Like you just didn't, I. Right. When she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law saying, by the man who these are, am I with child? And she said, discern, I pray thee, whose are these, the signet and bracelets and staff? In other words, in the case of the three-month-old before conceived child Judah, you are the father. Oh my God, my God, my God! Yeah. And Judah acknowledged them and said, She had more, she has been more righteous than I. Because that I gave her not to Shayla, my son. He and, and, and he knew her not. I'm sorry, he knew her again no more. And it came to pass in the time for travail that behold, twins were in her womb. And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread saying this came out first. And it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold his brother came out and she said how hast thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore his name was called, look at this y'all, his name was called Perez. And afterward came out his brother 
that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zara. So what's the point? I know somebody's asking. This is the point. Matthew chapter 1 gives us the genealogy of Jesus. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. This is the genealogy line of, 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 of Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. Well, that's Judah. Don't get it confused. And Judah begat who? Perez. That's why it's important for us to go through these genealogies, ladies and gentlemen, because there are key names that we will see and we will run into again. You see, when Matthew was listening, was listening the genealogies, he went all the way back. And Ferez was a part of that genealogy. And then it goes on from there. And then we just talked about Tamar. And the list goes on. Now that's chapter 38. Now let's talk about chapter 37. I'm, I'm sorry, 39. Now we come back to Joseph. Now that was a big jump in between those chapters, but now we come back in real time, and now we're back to Joseph. Let me tell y'all something. Have you ever been trapped as a Christian in a box to where it feels like nothing is going right? Nothing will ever go right. And you almost got to the brink of giving up. Because it seems like God is taking too long for you. For him to get what he is trying to do, get, to get it done. I mean, it, it, it is just... An irritating situation. I mean, you you want to continue to believe. You want to continue to uh, uh, have faith in what God is saying in His Word, but it, it seems like nothing is going your way. Well, it, it, it's not supposed to. But anyway, nothing, and I mean nothing, nothing. Nothing. Sorry. Um, nothing. It's working out. You at your lowest point. You are at the bottom of the barrel. You just ready to throw in a towel. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to tell you, don't give up. Because let me tell you something, Joseph is a very definition of not giving up. The most interesting thing about this is that people today, I mean, it's always been like this, but people today would call Joseph, let's just say, say what it is because we hear it preached, we we uh, uh, hear it uh, uh, taught. We hear it in so-called prosperity, uh, I'm sorry, prosperity theology. We hear it everywhere. Joseph would be considered a loser. Now, we don't call Joseph a loser because you've read your Bible. So these people here in the Bible, these Bible characters, all of them are just as blessed. Or as, it, 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 it's nothing wrong with them. I'm going to need you to go back and read that, y'all. These are real people. They have real conflicts. I asked someone, you know, I asked my brother here, uh, 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 Brother Ace Ventura. I'm like, what would you call Joseph, Brother Ace? Loser. 
I mean, that's what people call him today, right? So, so, hold on, hold on. So, would you call him again, sir? I mean, like, you know, would you call my brother? Come on now. That's what people call a person like Joseph today. Why? Let me, I'm going to tell you why. First of all, I want you to realize something. While we saw God appear to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you'll find something interesting. God doesn't appear to Joseph. God does not appear to have a physical manifestation to Joseph. Well, you, you're probably asking, so what? What's the big deal? Well, he, here's the big deal. God was with Joseph, even though he never saw the Lord. God was with Joseph, even though he has never saw a physical manifestation of him. It kind of sound like you and me now, doesn't it? Even though we have a couple of strange old today who claim that they have seen God. I mean, of course, they claim they've seen Santa. But the truth is, you and I have never seen a physical manifestation, a theophany, or Christophany of, uh, 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 of God. of God. We've never seen him. He's never appeared to you in your house. Well, Joseph is a clear Old Testament example of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. A clear, crystal clear example of Romans chapter 8 verse 28 and it says and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose because Joseph shows and demonstrates how much he loves God and gives us the perfect example of how we should continue to love, trust, and believe that God will do exactly what he said he was going to do. Joseph didn't see God. But you will watch him trust and follow. Now let me show you why people will call, I call them brosive sometimes, show y'all why they will call Joseph a loser. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. This is, ver this is verse 1 of chapter 39. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. So we're introduced to a man named Potiphar. So now the setting at this moment is he is in Egypt. Joseph is in Egypt now. And we're introduced to the captain of the royal guard of Egypt. His name is Potiphar. He was the one who bought Joseph and brought him to work in his house. Now check this out. Check out verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. Check it. The Lord was with Joseph. And he was prosperous. He, I'm sorry. He was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. I don't... Uh, like, hold on. Are you guys reading the same thing that I'm reading? Uh, look, look. And the Lord was with Joseph 
The Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph. Do you believe that? Well, yeah, the Bible tells us so. I, 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 let's be real, ladies and gentlemen. Do you believe that God was with Joseph? If you ask Joseph, he was like, Joseph, do you believe that God was with you? Uh, uh, but, well, that's easy. My brothers hated me. I was sold into the hands of the Ishmaelites. And now I'm here with this Egyptian Oh, yeah, God is with me. But the Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph as a slave. Not only does the Bible say that God was with Joseph as a slave, but he says, and he was a prosperous man. What do you got to show for your prosperity, Joseph? Nothing. What do you own? Nothing. How much do you make per week? Nothing. I'm a slave. Oh, but I'm a top slave. We'll read that later. That always gets it right. What does the top slave get to do? Get in trouble for what the bottom slaves didn't do, right? So you call that prosperous? We don't, but God does. Now, we're all American. We call prosper lots of stuff. You know, we hear on television because obviously it's obvious that God got it wrong. It is very, very, very obvious that God got it wrong, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Because we hear on TV all the time. We hear in, 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 in uh, some of our communities, we hear in books that if you don't have houses, if you don't have uh, uh, clothes, nice cars, if you ain't sitting on doves, you're not prospering. But we hear that a lot, don't we? Oh, the Lord is going to prosper you. You are going to have such and such and such and such. You're going to have, oh, but what if they don't get it? Is that person still prosperous? Not according to TV. I've been watching it. That word prosperous simply means to succeed. If you look this word up, and I hope you do, not in your English dictionary because you know, no, 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 no. look it up. Hebrew word, saleach. It means to succeed. It means that in whatever you do, when God is with you, you're going to succeed in whatever you're doing. You're going to come through in whatever comes in your hands. You want to know how I know this? Check this out. I mean, let's just keep reading. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait. First off, we over here saying now, oh, okay. Throwing people for a loop now. It, 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 like, <laughs> but, okay. And his master saw. This word saw. This man, it, this man perceived and he considered. He took a good close look at Joseph. And he saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord... May and 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 don't miss this. The Lord was with, and the Lord was with, and the Lord made. You know, just count, just keep count, just keep counting, just keep counting, just keep counting. Count. Man, I did that too early. Okay, that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Now, I thought these Egyptians were polytheists. Meaning they have many guys. B b b b hold on. So if this guy serves multiple guys, 
How could Potiphar tell that the Lord was with Joseph? That's easy. That's an easy one. Joseph was honest. He wasn't a weasel. He didn't whine. He didn't complain. He served. When when he was told to do this part of the floor, he did that part of the floor, and he did it just right. All right, so what's next? Do that part of the floor. <laughs> All right, because Joseph was an honest person. As a slave, yeah. As a slave, and the Lord was with him. And Potiphar said, this guy's good. Check this out. And Joseph found grace in his sight. That's part of our sight. And he served him. And he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hands. That word grace means that Joseph was found pleasing in the sight of Potiphar. Why? Because this was a hard working dude. As a slave. Oh, come on now. Y'all know what y'all y'all know how we do when we be working. Oh, I don't get paid enough to, for this. Oh, that's not my job. HR personnel, anyone who is a boss, who is a supervisor, who has once held that supervisor position. Wouldn't it be awesome to have a worker like this? Not just in work, but in church as well. I mean, any type of environment where you are working under someone, wouldn't it be nice to have an employee just like this? I bet you that, oh, I'm sorry, we, we're Christians, we don't bet. I can guarantee you that Joseph came to work at least five to 10 minutes early. I can guarantee you, he got there early. When it was time to clock in at eight o'clock, he clocked in at 7.50, 7.45, not 8.01, not 8.03, not 8.30, he was there. And as a result, watch this, he made him overseer over his house. And all that he put and, 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 I'm sorry, and all that he had, he put into his hands. So Joseph found favor. He was pleased. He was found pleasing in the sight of Potiphar. I'm going slow on this for a reason, because we see here that uh, 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 God has a plan for Joseph. But in the meantime, God, I mean, uh, in, in the meantime, Joseph is staying right here. So no matter what situation you're in, if you say you trust God and you find yourself in a situation where it doesn't look good, stay there. If you find yourself in a situation that you're not comfortable in at that moment, stay there. Because God will bless. Bless who? I hear somebody say it right now. He gonna bless me. Well, hold on. Check this out. Check this out. For those of you who want to you know, answer early. Check this out. Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had, he put into his hands. And it came to pass, verse five, from that, uh, from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, that's Potiphar making Joseph overseer over his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Hold up. So not only is Joseph a slave, not only is he continuing to be a model employee, but God is blessing Potiphar's house. <clears throat> now, come on now, we Christians. Everything that we do, We've heard Paul say it, and we get great illustrations and great examples from uh, Peter in his first letter. And everything that we do, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me, we do unto God. If you will work hard with your hands or with your head, 
Uh, I mean, God, God will honor that and everything that you are doing and the place that you are working for will be blessed. If you whine and you complain and you can't think, I'm sick of all these uncircumcised Philistines. I'm sick. God is not going to honor that. And you know what that employee is going to say? I ain't never hired another Christian. They some lousy workers. How many people have you heard say that? Or if you're a Christian boss and you cuss a lot. Or you're not a model Christian employer. We see here, Joseph was an honest man. And everything that he did, God blessed the house of the Egyptian Potiphar. Look at verse 6. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not aught he had save the bread which he did eat. This means that the only thing that Potiphar had to worry about was coming home and asking what was for dinner. He didn't check anything on the accounting side. Why? Because he put it in Joseph's hands and he trusts Joseph. What does Joseph get out of this whole thing? Nothing. I mean, maybe a good position and some nicer slave clothes, but none of this is his. He owns nothing. He's not going to own anything out of this. He's a slave. And then, at the end of verse 6, it says, And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. So we went from Joseph being a slave, him being pleased, or well pleased in Potiphar's sight, being a prosperous, prosperous man, with nothing, by the way. He, he, he got no house in his name. He ain't got no Cadillac. Cadillac, Cadillac. He, 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 he ain't got none of that. And then we go all the way to this man was well built and good looking. Now what in the world does that have to do with what we talking about? Check this out. Uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 28, 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. You know, uh, uh, this is talking about, you know, the work ethics of a person. But talking about Joseph being a you, you strapping young man here, is that he was a well-built, handsome man. What does this have to do with anything? Look at the next verse. And it came to pass after these that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. Fellas, you know how tempting that is? You got the top slave, got this good looking man here, and your master's wife, the boss's wife, like, I've been looking at you. She go to her friends. I feel all lush with fever. And then he was this young boy. Stranger to my eyes. Yeah, I, I, I mean, come on now. It's, it's tempting. It's tempting. But look at what Joseph says. He refused. I'm impressed. I mean, I'm pretty sure she was all that. And even if she wasn't, this is still impressive. I've been called stupid, me personally. I've been called stupid, slow. I've been talked about for refusing to do what God didn't want me to do. I've been told personally, you a man. That's the problem that I'm having. I'm a man, so I need Jesus. Look at what Joseph says. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master what is not what is with me in the house, 
and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. I'm the top slave. I'm it. Neither has he kept back anything from me except for you because you are his wife. Now look at what he says. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Somehow, ladies and gentlemen, with any type of sin, not just this, with any type of sin, we have strayed, we have gone away from the fact, we strayed away from the fact that we don't need to be doing this because God told me not to. We don't need to be doing this because it would, it would be displeasing to my father. We come up with all types of excuses to do anything now. Oh, don't worry, God will forgive me. But this guy just simply says, this would be a sin against God. And look at what he does. Now, and it came to pass, look, this wasn't the first time. How do I know that? Look at the next verse. And it came to pass, as she spoke to Joseph day by day. This was an everyday event. This, was, this, this wasn't just... That one time, again, gentlemen, if a certain lady keep pressing and pressing and pressing, this woman here pressed and pressed and pressed and he just kept, nah. Come the next day, you will always be my boo. My boo. No. The next day, my oh, my oh, my oh, my oh, my boo. No, leave me alone, woman. Until one day that he hearkened not unto her to lie with her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time, <clears throat> about this time, excuse me, I lost my place. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. That means he was working. And there was none of the men of the house there within. He was by himself. And she caught him by his garment saying, come here, boy, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and he ran and got out of there. He got out of Dodge. Y'all, I'm going to ask y'all again. You keep pressing. You just keep on pressing. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he had brought it in Hebrew unto, him, uh, uh, unto us to mock us. I skipped something. No, I didn't came unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. In other words, she just lied on this man, saying that he tried to rape her. And she laid up his garment by, uh, by her, until his Lord came home with Potiphar, and she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant, which you checked that you brought him in, he came in unto me to mock me. He tried to get me, man. And it came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out. Is some um, uh, uh, scriptures regarding this uh, uh, this incident. You have Second Timothy two and twenty two saying, "Flee from you know youthful lusts." You have First Corinthians six and eighteen, First Timothy six ten through twelve, as well as Titus one and fifteen. All these scriptures, Paul tells them, "Flee from it." 
we give in too hard. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. So Joseph was sold into slavery. He was still a committed servant, and he just got lied on. And now he's in prison. But, oh, check this out. Oh, please. I don't want you to miss this. Please. Please, please, please don't miss this. He cast him into prison. Verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph. Oh, are you serious? He was a slave. Now, he, now he's a prisoner. And the Lord was with him and showed him mercy. Mercy? I just got a lot on. I'm in prison right now. This is mercy. I'm going to need you to stop helping me, God. If this is mercy, stop helping me. Don't need it. You ain't with me. Stop helping me. This is not mercy. Yeah, it is. Because I'm going to throw this in there real quick before we move on to, to uh, uh, you know, the chapter 41. I believe that Potiphar really didn't believe her because in any incident, when it involves adultery of any kind, they're normally put to death. Verse 22, and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were, I'm sorry, and showed him mercy. I'm sorry, go back to 21. Show him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Wow. I hope y'all not miss. And, and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that and that which he did. Here go that word again, y'all. Pay attention to this one. The Lord made it to prosper. <laughs> uh, God, uh, uh, Joseph is prospering, is uh, uh, prospering in prison now. Yeah, he uh, uh, so he he got lied on. And he's prospering in prison. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> I believe you. Well, you ain't got to believe me. Believe God. So in, ver in, in uh, chapter 40, Joseph is in prison. It came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended the, their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was. Coincidence? I think not. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them. Whoa, you in prison, and you still serving? How many of y'all get mad as soon as you go into prison? You'll be saying all types of words. I know I would. And, and, and the captain of the guard Joseph, uh, uh, charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in war. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night. And both of them didn't know the interpretation of the dream, and each one was different. The butler and the baker both had a dream. Verse 6, And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? This man is in prison, and he's still showing all this humility. Why? Why, brother man? Why? Lesson learned here, ladies and gentlemen. While we're in a whole bunch of mess, while we're in, a, uh, uh, in certain situations that we were not looking to be in, continue to serve where you are. Because God has a plan. And he's working out that plan. And that plan that he has for you is going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Watch. You'll see. And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God? He's still reverencing God in prison. Let me tell y'all something. Joseph going to be in prison at least 13 years. 
and he's still reverencing God. His interpretations belong to God. So look, look, tell me, and God will tell me to let you know what those dreams mean. And the chief brother told his dream to Joseph. He said to him, in my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine were three branches, and it was so, it, I'm sorry, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. So he said, I saw a bunch of grapes, Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, I squeezed the grapes into the, in, in, into the king's cup, and I served it to him as I had done when I had waited on him. This is what Joseph said that his dream means. And Joseph said unto him, this is what it means. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift your head up, bring you out of here, and he's going to restore you to your place, and you will continue to give or you will continue to be the cupbearer for the king. Now, this is what Joseph says. He says, but I beg you, please think of me when you leave up out of here. And tell Pharaoh that I have done nothing to be deserving of prison. Verse 16, the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good. And he said, hey, could you tell me the meaning of my dream? Joseph said, all right, cool. He, he said, in the uppermost basin, there was all the manner of, 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 of baked meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. So there was some bread in the baskets, and the birds came and ate all the food that was there in the baskets. So what does it mean? It was three baskets. So Joseph says, the three baskets are also three days. And within three days, the Pharaoh will hang you and the birds will eat of your flesh. Came to pass, verse 20, the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and the chief baker among his servants. Now he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand, just like Joseph said, and he hanged the chief baker, just like Joseph said. Now check this out. Joseph asked him, I need you to remember me. Tell the Pharaoh I've done nothing. This was Joseph's plan. I didn't do anything to come in prison. Please, I need your help. Remember me. Verse 23 is very sad because this is where we're going to stop. He says, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but he forgot him. See, Joseph's plan. See, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plan. Joseph, Joseph's plan was to tell these guys this interpretation. Not to just you know tell them that wasn't the initial plan, but he was but he thought that, okay, God told me that you're about to get up out of here. So you, sir, I need you to tell the king that I didn't do anything. I want to get up out of here. You didn't think Joseph missed home? You didn't think Joseph had his days of being miserable? You didn't think that Joseph had his days of just wanting to give up? Do you think that... Look, we know that he's a Bible character. We know this. But he's a human being just like me and you. So he had feelings too. Come on now, ladies and gentlemen. We've heard that Joseph was sold into slavery and yet he was still that willing servant. Right now you may be in a place that you really don't want to be in. Tell the truth and shame the devil. You don't want to be there. Or maybe you have been in a place where you didn't want to be. While you're in that place, serve. 
While you are in that position, work for the Lord. Because remember, even though Joseph was serving Potiphar, he wasn't serving Potiphar. That makes sense? He, 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 he served Potiphar, but he lived his life for the Lord. He was serving the Lord. You may be in this place right now serving, but you're serving God. Because wherever, whatever you do, wherever place you are, you're representing God. God. So when people see you and what you're doing, they'll see it. Just like Potiphar saw it. Just like the prison guard saw it. And just like everybody else is going to see it. We're going to stop there. I encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, continue serving where you are. Continue to love the Lord. Continue to do what he wants you to do because right there, he will prosper you. Amen. And I was supposed to keep going with this. I'm sorry. He, 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 will, he will prosper you. Father God, we thank you. We love you. We glorify you and we praise your name. Please help us to continue to serve Wherever we are, Father, we know that in everything that you have for us, you will make us to prosper. You will make us to succeed. As we leave this place, but never your presence, please continue to watch us, keep us, and protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Thank you. The Lord say the same. See y'all later.